Well, hello everyone, and welcome back. Welcome to the show. Uh, it's me, your favorite Jackson. And uh, I know it's been a little while since I put out a scripted video, but uh, we are working hastily on the coelacanth video, so that should be out uh, within probably the next week. So probably before our, our next um, live stream, we should have that one out. Uh, joining me today is, of course, my host and co-host, Peter. I'm going to go for it, fame. Hello. Good to be back. Welcome. Glad to have you. Eager to, and... to learn new stuff from our favorite university. <laughs> learn being a, a str is a strong word. Yes. I think. Yeah. Um, we also have Neslig, who is one of uh, the script editors. Welcome. Hello, hello. I'm here to uh, hopefully learn and then unlearn what I have learned today. <laughs> learn and unlearn. Discovery, yeah. unlearning, discovery, unintelligent. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, we have a, a, um, uh, super oh, chat. Shoot, what's the term for it? A super chat. There we go. Thank you, Peter. We have a super chat right out the gate. That doesn't usually happen. From DM, Luca was a trilobite confirmed wing. Live from New York, it's Thursday night for $2. Yes, yeah. it is. Uh, We're not well, well, I don't well think it depends. Us are live from New York. It depends. It depends because for me, it's not. It's Friday night. <laughs> uh, for me, it is Thursday night, but I'm in uh, Louisiana. I don't know where Nestle is or what time it is where he is. So, um, well, I don't know. Nes Nes uh, Nestle's, was it Nestle's time should be 2 a.m. Uh, on a Friday. Consider considering his 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 uh his his heritage his I don't know yeah. where he where he grew up. I don't want to. I don't want to dox Nestle. Where 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 wherever the stork dropped him. <laughs> um. Luca was a trilobite confirmed. Is that a is that a, a dapper reference? What is that a reference to? I have not heard that one. Luca was a trilobite. That's kind of that's wild. Uh, we also have Trail Mix, Jamie E, and RJ, of course. Um, and yes, uh, DM, you also noticed uh, that I finally set up the memberships. Um, so yeah, they're up. We have as yep. of right now, we have Bacteria, Archaea, and Eukarya. Uh, membership tiers. And, so and Dean I kind of went with the Dean Wing. Apparently, is your first member. Yes, DM Wing, you are the very first member on this channel. So congratulations, you are uh, you are our uh, bacteria uh, member. So yeah, there you go. Um, I just kind of went with he's, per, he's Luca. Like the, the... He's Luca. You you are the Luca. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of went with like the normal. Um, tears oh on the last kent with bent kent kept saying trilobites evolved first okay and dalton hello dalton welcome welcome wait a minute wait a minute okay well so 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 Holwind say that the trilobite still alive oh hold on oh yeah Holwind, Holwind right. is accepting evolution trilobites evolved first well maybe he was trying to say somebody believes trilobites evolve or evolutionists believe trilobites evolve first um yeah ken hoven does actually think that trilobites are still around because he thinks there are isopods the the serolid isopods are actually uh trilobites which is silly stupid inane other synonyms all of the above uh all of the above <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um uh, oh, speaking of actually, speaking of Hovind, the uh, the elder and uh, totally not understanding zoology, uh, Hovind the younger is also going on a tirade right now. Yeah, uh, completely misunderstanding zoology. So he's he's just doing the Haring Yaya method, which we did a video about way back, uh, or the Haring Yaya tactic, I think we called it. Um, and the Haring Yaya, well, first of all, Haring Yaya is a is an Islamic creationist who may or may not be in prison for a millennium i think uh, he's, he's in prison now. for for about eight eight hundred years well i think dapper said he was like off on a technicality or something like that on the Ooh, last I... stream i have to look it up i'm, I'm yeah, not sure me too. But regardless 
he's a he's an Islamic creationist, um, and he's done some probable crimes. Um, but what he what he's famous for is basically taking a picture of a fossil and a picture of a modern organism and putting them side by side and saying, look, no evolution has occurred in supposedly 400 million years or 500 million years or whatever. It, it, it depends on it depends on where you look. I mean, you, you could also say he's famous for um, tax evasion, tax trafficking, <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, that's what he's also Minor famous things, for. You know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, the reason that he might be in jail for a millennium, yeah. Yeah. Um and so one of the hilarious things um one of the hilarious things that that Haran Yaga did uh was he made this apparently very expensive like glossy book where he did that over and over and over uh, pages and pages in which he just made that sort of comparison, but unfortunately in at least several cases he compared fish lures that mm -hmm. looked like insects yep. with actual insects or with fossils of insects because he, yes. he thought <laughs> that the lure was a living animal. He didn't yeah. realize it had a hook sticking out and, of it. And they didn't even Photoshop the hook out of the picture, which, nope. I mean, if you're going to try and fool people, at least do that. I mean... I mean, I mean, he, he or some other guy probably looked on Google Images and right. just oh, that, that, that looks that looks all right, I guess. Yeah, and I, had a, I use that and had a tiny picture, yeah. then downloaded the the bigger uh, version of it and just send it to the printer without looking at it. Right, that's right. Yeah, the first time I heard about that was um, Richard Dawkins' book, uh, "The Greatest Show on Earth," uh, and I think Casey Myers has done uh, posts about it on the Ferengula, you know. Mm -hmm. that was way back in the good old days you know with um like back when uh, uh you had like dawkins and pz making you know the circuits and ray comfort and all those sorts of guys and stuff and oh sentenced to eight thousand six hundred and fifty eight years in prison whoo yes that's, that's a little that's, bit of time that's about it um but uh but but uh so that's the haranyaya method um so Hoven the Younger is doing that. He's just taking a fossil, comparing it to a modern organism and saying no evolution has occurred. Now, I first saw him doing that on... Oh, yeah, DM Wing says, Lest I heard Haran Yaya's sentence was thrown out on a technicality, then scheduled for a new trial. Okay. Gotcha. Mm. Okay. Okay, gotcha. Um, so the first oh, one that I saw... Icarus is a question. Icarus says, is, is, it, is it Jackson you or we to you? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be I think it's it's wheat you or wheat poli sci how about that <laughs> I um, think Jackson you is better branding I would say Jackson, Jackson you is better it's better branding Jackson and all, you it, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it, roll, it rolls off the tongue more nicely I would say Jackson you wheat you yeah you're, I guess you're kind of right um so hoping the younger um, posted a picture of a fossil tri uh, sorry, trilobite, sorry, trilobites on the brain, fossil coelacanth, and then a modern coelacanth, and said no evolution has occurred. Now, uh, if any of you have read the Ancestor's Tale, or you paid attention to what I said five minutes ago, uh, the coelacanth's tale is the next video uh, that we're going to be making. So, um, the... The the all the information about like the differences between modern and and fossil coelacanths, it's all very fresh on my mind right now because Nestlig and I were just looking over all that data, and so to see Hovind put up a picture of a random fossil coelacanth, I don't even know which one it is, and the modern one just screams to me like you didn't do any research at all. Which I mean, of course he didn't. It's 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 Eric Hovind. I mean, obviously he didn't, but but um. Coelacanths, modern coelacanths are quite different in a number of ways from their fossil relatives. Like the closest fossil relative that we know of right now to Latimeria lived in like the late Jurassic. And there are a number of differences, both cranial and postcranial, between that fossil member, which is called Swinzia, and the modern Latimeria. There are lots of differences. So, but people throw around like, oh, you know, it hasn't changed all the time. Um, and so I said, so I wrote a comment uh, in which I said, you know, 
it, hey, Eric, did you bother to do a morphological analysis at all between Latimeria and its and the, the fossil to see if this is true? Well, uh, I got tone policed by somebody else um, who was very mad that I dared to ask Eric if uh, if if he did a morphological analysis. Um, and then uh, how dare then... you to ask for receipts? <laughs> Right, yeah. How, how do I ask for evidence? Then Dapper and I uh, talked to that guy for a while. Uh, then Kent, or Kent, sorry, uh, Kent Jr. Then Kent Jr. posted another one. Uh, this time with uh, 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 horseshoe crab. See, he showed a picture of Mesolimulus, which is a fossil from the Jurassic, then the modern Limulus, and said, "Look, th look, they're the same." Which, no, again, they're not. So, oh, Jamie E says, uh. The 8,658-year prison sentence was a result of the retrial, which occurred last year. The original trial only gave him 1,075 years. <laughs> okay. Okay, so he's in he's in prison for for over eight millennia. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Went from one millennium to eight millennia. Oh well. Um, so I then, wonder. I wonder how he's going to serve that. Or so, if he dies, are they are going to cremate him and put him in an hourglass? So he, he can. He can. He doesn't get his out. seventy-two virgins until the eight thousand years have passed. You know. Yeah. So, they, they they may um, also they also may be raisins. Raisins. It depends on. <laughs> um, but um, but anyway, so. Uh, he then posted, so the funniest one that Eric has posted so far is he put up a fossil of a lizard and then a fossil of a tuatara, which is not a lizard. <laughs> lizard is the members of Squamata, and not even all members of Squamata, whereas tuatara is not a member of Squamata. It's a member of Rhynchocephalia, which is sister to Squamata, but not within it. So... I pointed out that's not even a lizard, you absolute nitwit on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, here's a fossil lizard and a modern lizard. See, they're the same. It's like you didn't even put up a picture of a lizard. How stupid can you be? <sighs> oh well. Well, you can't you can't expect uh Hoven the Younger to do any kind of research. I mean, it's just like the Bible. He went to school and everything stays the same. So what he learned, he learned. There's no need to, to go back and see if he needs to learn it's more. It's funny you mention that, Peter. Apparently, Hoven the Younger dropped out of an unaccredited Bible school. That's something worth having on your resume. <laughs> that is, yeah. That's next level dropout. <laughs> he dropped out of an unaccredited school, an unaccredited mm -hmm. creationist school. That's yeah, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. When the bar's on the floor, you go into the basement. You know. Yeah. He had to dig up the bar. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> um. So anyway. That, see, and now I wonder why there is like no. You have to go out of your way to get that wrong. You're correct, Smitty. Yeah. The Tuatara is not the first image result for lizards. You are correct. Yep. Exactly right. Lizards are not nocturnal. Uh, some geckos are nocturnal. We have nocturnal geckos around here. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Peter? Uh, some some we have lizard people. I'm I'm nocturnal. I'm, exactly. I probably uh, some someone would has would have called me a lizard. Somewhere over time, I mean. Now I'm I'm just wondering why we don't have a video of Kent Hovind uh, explaining what he did to Eric when he dropped out of an unaccredited Bible school, because we we do have the one where he went to the dentist, and and got whacked. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, it 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 uh, should have been worse dropping out of Bible school. Didn't it? I mean, how could you fail? They're literally just giving you the answers. Yes, I mean, oh well. 
<sighs> anyway, so uh we're getting back to our um we're getting back to uh to taking our course at Discovery U. Uh we're not uh we finished the uh the are the textbooks lying video, which I feel like I got more frustrated at that video than I normally do. And I think the primary reason for that was it was a kid who was repeating the lies of the Discovery Institute. It wasn't it wasn't someone who's a like a grifter like Eric Hovind is or uh you know or or um uh, like Wells or, or Jonathan Wells or Stephen Meyer or you know whether or not they believe these things they're not going to change their opinions because they make way too much money um and also they're adults they can do whatever they want but it mm-hmm. it, it stirred other feelings for me seeing like a kid you know a kid who's literally just out of high school like they mentioned she had just graduated yeah um uh, and there she was saying all the same talking points and it's really disappointing um it, it really just it made is. me sour so um anyway maybe one day she'll you know realize it's all wrong and then she'll get out of that but i just yeah i just didn't enjoy it didn't, didn't like it was not a no. fan <laughs> no, same here. But today um, we get to uh, out of the closet. Well, I've been out of the closet for years, Peter. But uh, but yes, yes, the yes. show is also coming out of the closet. Now. But did you did you bring your skeletons? That's what, what we're here for. Well, I've got some in the closet, some out here with me. They're all over the place. Uh, okay. Erica has skeletons, you know, right that sit right behind her, or uh, well, not skeletons. I guess she has skulls that sit right behind yeah. her when she streams. Spooky, so. spooky skeletons. <laughs> That's right. It's spooky season. Perfect time for skeletons. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, I, I have to, I have to ask you. Did you see the the thing that went viral? The guy who had his Halloween uh, uh, stuff up in in the front yard, and he had a decapitated Jesus. And, and oh, Satan holding his head, and yeah. and even his girlfriend walked away from him. Which I, mean, I yeah, that's just cringe. Like you know, free speech and all, yeah. But like, if you do cringe stuff, people are gonna treat you with cringe. So in the Netherlands, you know. there would be it's, a tour. It's, it's, it's there would be both. a tour going past your house. You would make all the papers, and mm. and people would be visiting you. I'm just saying. Uh, it it, go, it goes both ways. If you 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 I can agree. be an asshole, but people can be an asshole against you. Yeah. Well, I agree. I agree. I mean, yeah. yeah if yeah, no, it's weird. It's cringe. Um, it's whatever. I mean, he's an adult. He can do whatever he wants at his house. But mm-hmm. you know, you can't be like, I did something cringe, and like, oh, people aren't allowed to get. I mean, so I agree. It's like I don't think you should be. Well, I mean, obviously, I'm not religious, but like, I'm not mad about it because mm-hmm. I'm not a religious yeah. person. I really don't no, care I... what people put in their yard. But I just saw it, and I was kind of like, "That's a little weird," you know. Eh, I still, okay. I still want yeah. one of those. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it. It's it's um, uh, bicycle handlebars on a long pole on on a on a spring, and then it has a, a kind of a ghostly thing floating off of the handlebars with a scream mask. And you can put that in your garden, mm-hmm. and it will will turn uh towards the wind and then move with the wind in i need to have oh, okay. one of those i just need i'm and i'm going to make one myself because it's not too hard take a spring of a yeah. car weld a long pole onto okay. it with with a couple of handlebars and then all you need to do is a skull and and some rags and you're done oh i'm good yeah, yeah. I, I need to make one of those <laughs> Um, so, all right, I guess we're, uh, we're going to jump right on in. Right, uh, right on. We're, see some we're, we're 20 minutes, skeletons? we're 20 minutes in and we haven't done anything yet apart from ranting. It's, it's about time we do something, right? Well, I've, I've been running into creationists this week and I wanted to talk about all the silliness that I saw. So, mm-hmm. okay, fair enough. Okay. Let's, uh. All right, we go. learning objectives. So chapter 16, Skeletons in Their Closet. Main point, identify problems which have arisen with highly publicized alleged transitional forms. Opening chapter question, when you hear a media story, 
should be medium a medium story about the new discovery of a missing link do you tend to believe what you hear or are you skeptical uh actually so fair enough uh you should be skeptical of that yes. yeah I, I agree you should uh um, yeah. missing link is a stupid term it is a relic from the uh, aristotelian great chain of being it is not a term that has any place in modern biology and so when people use it you should bop them on the head lightly <laughs> not very it's, hard just just lightly and say, tell them no it's probably going to be clickbait if it's got that in the title yes yes absolutely um, like uh, we it, talked it, about... it, 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 it's, it's either overstated sometimes too. Like uh, the, the the famous case is the Ida, the mm -hmm. Ida fossil, right? I, Ida, uh, Darwinius Ma Mes uh, how is it called again? Darwinius yeah, Messele. Mm -hmm. Messele, yeah, from, from the Messel pit, yes. Which is a really cool fossil, and it tells us, it it shows us some something cool or some cool stuff about the transition from early primates. T towards the strepsorines, and that's really cool and all. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, when it was when it was first discovered, it was uh, it was thought to be an a, an early haplorine, and then the news or the papers uh, were like, um, "This is the ancestor of humans," and it's like, no. Even if it is on the haplorine lineage, it is almost certainly not our direct ancestor. Yeah. Uh, but it turns out it was not even on the haplorine lineage. It was an early strepsorine. Uh, but it was still, it's still a very primitive strepsorine. So it's transition. It's a transitional strepsorine. Yeah, it's, again, the further back you go, the more indistinguishable two related lineages become. So like the early stem strepsorines would have looked uh, almost identical to the early stem haplorines. And that's why the confusion of them like right. this. And yeah. we've, uh, in the, uh, I think it was the, the platypus's tale, we talked about uh, like Boreos Finita versus Australos Finita and how mm -hmm. it, the the difference at the base between Boreos Finita, which is like or, well, I mean, well, it's basically like, um, yeah, basically the, 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 uh, the Therians, the Therians on one hand and the Monotremes on the other. Once you get to um, the base, the difference between the early, the ancestors of like the Therians and the ancestors of the Monotremes is like whether or not they have like a cusp on the back of their tooth, you know, or a ridge yeah. running along the side, something like that. It's like, it's these extremely minute differences, extremely, extremely minute, um, which it's like, a, it's like, it's also a paradox because the, the it, like play, placing something on a phylogeny large becomes more reliable when you have more differences. When we are dealing mm -hmm. with a very few distinguish, distinguishable features, then phylogeny becomes very, very fuzzy at these right. places. Yeah. And of course, yeah. that's when the creations will begin to talk about, oh, phylogenetic uncertainties, these fossils don't count, therefore. <laughs> yeah. 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 And and what you have to realize, what what they don't realize is that phylogenetics is a probabilistic enterprise yes. right like when you put you put the well, i would say i would values. say statistical yeah statistical yeah it's a exactly. statistical statistical enterprise and so you put like your bootstrap values on there and you can see like okay you know what is the probability or, or you know what what how does this particular tree fare against this other topology which is more supported uh in the the computer in the computer program and like you know that's it's not because this is science. This is not like this is the 100% correct answer. It's going to be this is the best. Uh, this is the the best hypothesis we have given the available data. And if we get more data, we can change our hypothesis accordingly. But currently, this is what it is. And you can make these you know huge trees with lots and lots and lots of data points, and and you can you can get your phylogenies and whatnot. Uh, but but it, it is still statistical at at its core. So, all right. I am aware of the general nature of supposed evolutionary transitions, including one: uh, fish evolving into amphibians, reptile two reptiles evolving into birds, and three land mammals evolving into whales. I can describe Eda as a fossil promoted by. Oh, I didn't even read ahead. Good, good job, Nestle. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> as the yeah, link between humans and other animals, as well as the subsequent evidence 
suggesting Ida was unrelated to human evolution. Well, that's not true either. <laughs> that's not what they said. No. She's not unrelated <laughs> to human evolution. I mean, in a sense, all organisms are related to the evolution of all yeah. other organisms, right. ultimately. I mean, that's what common ancestry means. But well, I, I, I guess they meant to say that oh, it's, it's not like unique to our lineage as opposed to like the chimpanzees or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Which would also it's, be wrong it, and weird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like I, 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 ha I remember. Uh, like well, although it's, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of him, David Attenborough. But I remember mm -hmm. a clip of him saying something like, "Oh, we have uh, primitive humans and such, but we, but we still have a link between us or between them and the early apes. Where is the link? Now we have a link, but e that's not Ida. That's yeah. not Ida. Where Ida belongs. Yeah. So right. I think we, I, I, David Attenborough was wrong when he said that, yes. Or something similar to that. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and I mean, we do we do have um, early uh, hominids, early hominoids. Uh, we talked about it in... Um, that would have been, I guess, the Gibbons tale? Well, no, mm -hmm. we also talked about it in the Orangutan's tale. So yeah, the orangutan yeah. and the gibbons. We we talked about the like stem hominids and stem hominoids. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of them. Uh, actually, yeah. a, new, a new paper just came out a few weeks ago on mm -hmm. a new stem mm -hmm. hominid. Uh, it was Andaluvius, I think, or an Andaluvius, or something like that, uh, from Turkey. Or was the, or was the, or was the I think it was specifically a stem African ape, right? Yes. Like so, uh, like yes. So like, what is that? Homin is it hominina? Hominin, like I think. Yeah. Yeah, whatever it is it's very weird yeah so the so the, the basically is at the base of the gorilla chimp human lineage and it's not the only one there are others like Gregopithecus and and a few others so we do have you know we do have apes fossil apes representative of that of that whole whole transition <laughs> so yeah again it, it's still wrong it's all wrong um where was it i, I can describe tiktolic rosier as a fossil discovered in the Canadian Arctic, uh, which has been called a transitional form between fish and tetrapods due to it supposedly being a fish with a wrist and its supposed placement in the fossil record between the fish ancestors of tetrapods and the first true tetrapods. Well, that's true. I mean, that's still true. Like, to this day, that hasn't changed. <laughs> um, I can provide... Oh, is, my, is, my mic pop, is my mic popping? Like, St Brian Stevens says the mic is popping. Oh, uh, Just slightly. Just slightly, but it, yeah, it... it... It is popping oh. every once in a while. Oh, I didn't hear it. Uh, no, uh, all right. I can provide evidence that challenges claims that Tiktaalik was a transitional form between fish and tetrapods by noting that it, one, lacked wrists. No? It has carpals. What are you talking about? It has carpals. We literally showed a picture of its carpals on, uh, on, on the video, on the lungfish's tail. What? No. <laughs> Had fish like fins. Yeah, remind me, Nestlig, uh, remind me how many living fish have uh have an a humerus, radius, and ulna and carpals? How many how many are there? Well ab 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 about uh the, de the tetrapods. I don't know how many num how many tetrapods do we have right now? But yeah. No, I mean, no oh, fish. Oh, if we oh, no. if we, if you exclude the tetrapods, then none, yes. <laughs> yeah, zero. Not not a single yeah. living Fish in the traditional sense has fins like Tiktaalik, not one. The fins of Tiktaalik include humerus, radius, and ulna, and carpals, like our arms do and our wrist. Crazy how that works. Uh, very different from the. Oh, they're just lying at this point. Very different from the skeletal structure of tetrapod limbs. They're just lying, and appear in the fossil record almost twenty million years after track after the the oh, track by two tetrapods. I I, I already expected that, uh, that uh, uh, yeah, that argument so, about uh, incongruence with the fossil, uh, yeah. We don't actually know that. We don't actually know that the Poland tracks are tetrapods. Uh, it could be the case that there, that um, limbs evolve more than once, or uh, tetrapod-like limbs evolve more than once. Without a fossil progenitor, we don't actually know. Now you can. Well, I, I would say I would say that uh, from what I've seen from the papers, uh, I think the safest option is to say that they are related to the tetrapod limbs, the uh, trackways. 
Uh, even it then, it's be. Not, yeah. I I mean, we've even seen like um, fin like or sorry, uh, like hand like uh, fins evolve in a couple of different groups. Like anglerfish have done it a couple of times, for instance. Um, so I don't know. I mean, you're right. It could be. It very much could be. Um, it could be a tetrapod. Now, even still, even if it is a tetrapod, um, it still shows up after the first Sarcopterygians in the fossil record. So the the Zakelmi tracks uh, are preceded by Sarcopterygians. So it does precede uh, the tetrapodomorphs. Or sorry, actually, it precedes a lot of tetrapodomorphs, but not all of them. So tetrapodomorphs do still appear like Tungsenia and Canichthys in the fossil record before the Zakelmi tracks. So even still, there is congruence between phylogeny and stratigraphy. Now you can say, you know, well, it, it means that Tiktaalik is not our direct ancestor, which, okay, it probably wasn't in the first place. Uh, same is true for Acanthostega, uh, Ichthyostega, etc. Or it could be the case that all of these have very long uh, ghost lineages, which could also be the case. I was looking at a paper not too long ago that suggested the Zakelmi tracks might not be uh, tetrapods simply because of the... If you remove them, there is really good congruence between the fossil record, uh, between phylogeny and stratigraphy. But with them, there is a bit of an upset for that one... Uh, yeah, if they found tetrapod tracks in Silurian layers, they might have a case. Yeah, that that's true. But, but yeah, it's more like, uh, like late, um, uh, early Devonian. But yeah, if you remove the, the Zakelmi tracks, there is a really good congruence between phylogeny and stratigraphy. But you do have this little bit of an upset with the Zakelmi tracks, but you still have the Zakelmi tracks after the first tetrapodomorphs appear in the record. Oh, so. Yeah. Well, okay. here's my my opinion on this is that mm -hmm. I I think we are dealing with the sam sampling bias. I think like we when we discovered yeah. like the first the first uh, stem that about like the the Eusinopteron. Uh, mm -hmm. I I don't remember how old Eusinopteron is. I think about the 480 million years ago or something like that, right? Or 85. Uh, no, I think. it was like. Uh. I don't think it was quite that old. Uh, let me look. Give me one sec. Hold on one sec. You, you said Eusinopteron? Yes, Eusinopteron. Was it that old? Uh, what, what 385. 385. Oh, 385. Oh, okay, all right. So I, I, I think what happens is that we mainly discovered that fossil and then, of course, later fossils like the uh, uh, Ichthyos, Ichthyostega or the uh, or the more derived... Uh, I can't host, you know, the Ichthyostega. I think we, we went to looking for fossils uh, in intermediate ages, mm -hmm. and that's why, we, and that's why we have a lot of those right now yeah. between those ages. But then, then we later we can discover more earlier, earlier uh, fossils that, that preceded them. So I think uh, it's not it's not unusual for like the early early phase to have like the various different lineages that all coexist with each other some of them lived more mm -hmm. on land and some of them went back into the ocean and such yeah yeah i mean the i don't know because at this point like i would i wouldn't be surprised if the if the, if the tetrapods uh uh like the 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 the, uh, the, no, the node of tetrapod uh, i don't not, not the crown group but more like the common like at the place when the first seven or eight fingers, the first fingers appeared, I think that those could have been a lot, old, lot older than uh, than Tiktaalik. They, they could have been, yeah. Sure, I mean, and I I don't yeah. necessarily disagree. What I'm saying is, I think they could have evolved more than once. I wouldn't be surprised if if a tetrapod like gait uh, and fingers also evolved more than once, given that. We have lots of fish that spend some degree of time on land and finger like, you know, fins have evolved more than once and that sort of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if, you know, something along the stem lineage of like, you know, the, the tetrapodomorphs, yeah. if there's, more than one. There's, there's also a possibility. Those. Yeah. Yeah. 
That it's wouldn't surprise like, like we, we, have, we have something like it in, in Bird, or almost like that. We have the, uh, the Scansory of the Rigians, where mm-hmm. they almost, yeah, almost, no, no, not quite, but they almost seem to like have evolved their wings independently, although they are not mm-hmm. powered flyers. They are not powered flyers. Right. But, but still, they, they, they look like they have invented the wing almost in a very different way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if something like that happened. And the very first uh like scan story up to, to rigid with the the like bat like wings was uh only discovered in like 2015 or something wasn't it not very long ago yeah but the, the wings yeah yeah like we we, we have known about the scan story up the regions uh, for yes. a long time but uh mm-hmm. at the first with the uh, wings or uh, yeah 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 i think that one was like 2015 recent. or something like that it was very recent yes um Anyway, yeah. Uh, anyway, we need to do more paleontology. We just need more paleontologists. That's what we need. <laughs> I, I think, I, like my, my, I think my my personal opinion is that that for to me it seems uh, it seems very likely that they are tetrapod trackways. So the safest mm. answer for right now is that that is that the the uh, the appearance of the, the at least the digits, the set eight fingered digits tetrapods. Were older, mm-hmm. and these like the these tectalic and ichthyostega, these, these different lineages of stem tetrapods were all coexisting for a long time. Yeah, there's and that's no, possible. Which is no, yeah. which no, which no contradiction. But of course, your yeah. your possibility about independent evolution is also a possibility. But I would say, unless we have more evidence, we shouldn't conclude that. That's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm open to. Either way, whatever the answer may be, the, the simple fact is we do need more people doing oh, research yeah. into that, you know, into that time period mm-hmm. to, to figure out what might be the answer. So, yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, I can describe Archaeopteryx as a supposed transitional form between reptiles, specifically theropod dinosaurs and birds, because it, one, is the earliest known fossil of a bird capable of flight. Well, that's debated. Uh, two had teeth, a bony tail, and wing claws like reptiles, and three had wings like birds. Well, as we just said, it's not the only one. So, uh, also, uh, if you ask, um, like paleontologists, like, um, like, uh, was it Andrea Co? Um, he doesn't actually think that, uh, Archaeopteryx was capable of powered flight, uh, or at least not very good powered flight. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, and that does seem to be the like the the consensus is that yeah, if it could fly, not very well. So uh, it it would have have pl- uh, uh, flown for at least a very prolonged period of time, I mean, like from three yeah. to three, perhaps something like that. Right. Yeah. 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 Not very good. Because um, it, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a keeled sternum, and it doesn't have many of the fl- like l- very specific flight muscles that modern birds use to for the upstroke and the downstroke, like. Or, or, or at least not as not as enhanced as modern birds have. Right. It, yeah. Right. Yeah. I can provide evidence challenging claims that Archaeopteryx represents a transitional form between reptiles and birds by explaining one: some living birds, like the Hoadzin, have wing claws. Okay, so here's why that's a stupid argument. It has the what the Hoadzin. And chickens and emus and all other birds that have wing that have a single wing claw have that one claw on the end mm-hmm. of their fused digits. There are three fused digits. Do you know what Archaeopteryx did not have? It did not have three fused digits. They yes. were separate. That is the yeah. difference. And the fact that they all keep saying this. All creationists make this stupid argument when none of them, like, will take a second to actually think it through. It's just pathetic. I it's also believe, stupid. like, uh, like, uh, like uh, it's a good, like, uh, uh, R.O.R. also made a, made a photo of his uh, uh, emu and mm-hmm. also a photo of, of, the, of the, like, the arm that the emu have. And at the end, you know, there's also, like, a tiny claw at the end of this arm like it's, it's barely a wing it's, a, it's basically it's just an arm basically and it's almost it has almost no muscle attached to the arm as well well and it's fine like because the the what scene 
uses uh when when the, the juveniles the the juveniles yes. use the the claw to do this sort of weird quadrupedal climbing of like of trees because they're in the amazon but but it's fused the fingers are fused it's not it's not the unfused wing fingers that uh, the uh archaeopteryx has I'm, i may be wrong but Very I think in the ju in the juveniles they are a bit more flexible but as adults they become very rigidly fused for flight basically in the in your world yeah. but, but the, that is of course not the same as in archaeopteryx in archaeopteryx it, it has the classical three digits fully mm -hmm. separated yes like uh, like a fossil raptor basically just yep. three separate digits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh many of extinct birds known from the fossil record had teeth and or bony tails not necessarily derived from <laughs> We're telling ancestors name one name just one just one because when you say that what you're talking about is like the enantiornithines and the confucius orniths which <laughs> which also had all these dinosaurian characters like you're just saying they're literally just saying uh uh, well, also, uh, Confucius Ornus Me. had bo had yeah. uh, teeth. It's like, uh, yeah, yeah. because it's yes. a primitive bird, obviously. They all stem birds, yes. yes. What's, what's your point? Are, there, uh, are we have also other translation of all? Oh, all right, yes, yes, we have more. I know, we have more than one. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, bro. <laughs> um, three, the theropod. Oh, God. The theropod ancestor or theropod dinosaurs assumed to be ancestral to birds appear after Archaeopteryx in the fossil record rather than before. Okay, so we had this argument with long story short, and it was baffling because one, it's simply not true. Theropods predate uh, Archaeopteryx by like 80 million years. You have like Herrerasaurus, uh, or at the very least, like Coelophysis in the triassic which is definitely a theropod right yeah so you know we're, we're gonna although, although to, the hilarosaurids are but although to, to be fair they in, in this in this sentence they clarified as that the theropods or the theropod dinosaurs assumed to be the ancestors of ancestral two birds so i think they what? are i think they are specifically referring to the saurus like they are they are they are very butch they are butchering and very vaguely referencing well, that's not true either. They made by yeah well that isn't true either yeah, because yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. uh, yeah. uh, uh proceratosaurus which is a, an early uh tyrannosaur which is also therefore a member of the coelurosaurs predates archaeopteryx yeah, yeah. and yes. there are a couple of others and i can't remember offhand anymore because it's been a while um, uh, we, we, we went over this claim in the, uh, the long story short uh, video as well, yes. Yeah, we covered we, it there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we also talked about it in the, the series we did on dinosaurs way back. And um... But, it, but this, the, the point is this, this argument is in reference to a, a very old uh, fiducia, fiducia yes. claim. Yeah. Yes. Who is no and longer we, we taken just, seriously? <laughs> yeah, it, it it wasn't even taken seriously back then because back then the response was like, oh, we don't claim that Archaeopteryx is like descendant from any solar species that we know. They are sisters and cousins basically. And so, but but but, but since then we do have uh, pre Archaeopteryx solarosaurs. Uh, Andrew so Cumming it's, it's, out, uh, it's outdated. Yeah, yeah. Andrew Cumming points out Guanlong and Anchiornis also. Um, and RJ yes. points out, yes, uh, we also talk about this issue in uh, uh, The Rocks Were There, Volume 1. Uh, they made this claim. It's very stupid. But yeah, in, in essence, there are both Coelurosaurs and Feathered Coelurosaurs before Archaeopteryx. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. they, they just fall uh, on their face. Uh, it, it's it's a, like even back when we didn't have these these fossils like one long and such and uh, and and, and even mm -hmm. back then it, it still commits the same fallacy as like why are why are there still monkeys mm -hmm. that's basically right. the, same, yes. the same the same flawed thinking the exactly and the same flawed thinking yeah which we also um which we also pointed out it, it is literally that argument because he made that uh, long story short made that argument about uh, Indohyus being uh, after packaging yes. the fossil record, 
And he yeah. literally responded with, I don't understand why asking why are there still monkeys is a bad question. Like he he bit the bullet on that one and was just like, did, did, did he say, I don't did understand he say that? at all. Yes. Did he say that? He did say that. Yeah. He said, I don't understand why that's a bad question. Hmm. I actually don't remember if that was in our. I I I, I, I or thought if that was in like our, I thought he did, I I thought he he denied like he, he denied like oh I'm not doing the uh, why are there still monkeys been, arguments. I maybe yeah. I maybe mistake. I think that was in our live interaction. I when I when mm. I pointed that out and he responded with I don't understand why that's a bad question. But I do remember him saying that that is that is committed to memory. Yeah. Like I was, um, like in, in, yeah, maybe my memory is too vague, but I remember from the video responses, he was like, "Oh, I'm not, I'm not doing the why are there still monkeys claim. I'm not doing that." But which, actually, I mean, he, was. he was. Actually, he was, he was. yeah, he was. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. Was. Saying, "Well, why does Indo Hyas appear after Pacasidus?" Uh, dude, that that is the why are there still monkeys? When you're asking, when you're asking, um, why does this organism? appear after another organism in the fossil record if one is supposed to be ancestral to the other the answer is one is not ancestral to the other <laughs> they share a common ancestor mm -hmm. uh indo or pacasitis is not descended from indo -Hyas. they shared a common ancestor who preceded both of them likewise with monkeys we are not descended from any extant monkeys we share a common ancestor with monkeys that was not a that was not a, a, a modern monkey so yes Whew. Yeah, th these points are getting dumber. Yeah, it's true. Um, I can identify major transitional changes that would have had to occur in a hypothetical reptile to bird transition, including cold-blooded to warm-blooded. Yeah, we we have that. There, there are. Uh, I can't remember what structure it is in in uh, bones that correlates with being warm-blooded, but theropods have those structures or have like yeah. the partial structures that because they were mesothermic, they weren't. Fully warm blooded, but as you get closer to the avialans, those that becomes more, uh, they become more warm blooded. Uh, slow metabolism to fast metabolism, okay, okay. Well, it, it's it's pretty well known that uh, like the, the growth rate of uh, theropods, especially like uh, even tyrannosaurs, that their growth rates was insane. So they they had to have mm -hmm. a fast metabolism to have these growth rates. I right. don't think there is any other way around that. But also, I mean, uh, metabolism, you don't have to gain anything to go from a slow to a fast metabolism, right? You are speeding up the rate at which these chemical processes are occurring, but it doesn't mean you're actually like, you're not gaining new processes, right? You're just increasing the rate at which they occur. Yeah, it's also... It's also like a, a, a common conception that these are like dichotomies, like you, oh, you have either cold-blooded organism or warm-blooded right. organism, and but, but they, they, they are on a continuum. Right. So yeah, yeah, because uh, you have things like gigantothermy, uh, where basically you have like super yeah. large uh, cold cold-blooded organisms who, in effect, have warm-bloodedness just as a function yeah. of the fact that they're huge. Uh, the, the, like the one, the one thing I like to believe, although I, I, it's it's like a little pet pet idea that I have is like these sauropods, these gigantic sauropods. I think when they like fermented plant material inside, I think that the, the very process of fermentation would have generated enough heat to heat themselves. I would mm -hmm. suspect. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, Andrew Cummings said crocodiles are a sort of example of, of number three. Three chambered hearts into four chambered hearts. Uh, their heart is three chambered, but also similar to a four chambered. I mean, again, we're, we're just talking about an extra chamber in an also, organ also, that already exists. You know, I, I wanted to point out that many people forget crocodilians also have four chambered hearts. Yeah. Yes, and okay. crocodilians and birds are both archosaurs. It's, a, yeah. it's an archosaur trait to have four chambered hearts. It's not a, okay. it's not the same as our four chambered. Like I think it is, the structure is a bit different from mm -hmm. our our way of how our four chambers are set, set settled up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. No, I, I guess I forgot that too. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, 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 no worries. Man, no like it's, it's not your fault. Many people forget about this detail. 
I don't yeah. typically think about crocodilian hearts. It's not normally a subject yes. I, I think about. Um, uh, no feathers to feathers. Well, I mean, yeah, obviously. <laughs> we have a really good uh, idea of how that process occurred. And then breathing via diaphragm to breathing via air sacs. Well, okay, but you also have to remember that like there were air sacs in like sauropods too, right? Like they had the, these... Uh, they had like super pneumatic bones and everything, so it's not just birds. Yes, you have yes. reptiles, quote quote, which also breathe, you know, in part via air sacs. It's not just birds. It, it would have been sauropods and theropods and probably uh, ornithischians also. So yeah, again, mm -hmm. it's like a it's like a, a an ancestral dinosaurian character, not just a bird character. So yeah. Um, I can explain problems with alleged feather dinosaur fossils, including that they, one, generally aren't feathered. Dino fuzz is distinct from feathers. I'm very intrigued to see how they support that one. Because just to, just for reference, um, the, uh, the, the, the dino fuzz on uh, Sinosauropteryx is indistinguishable from like the downy feathers on modern birds. So good luck. I I, I guess they like they make they make a strict definition of feathers as the like the panaceous double veined uh, asymmetrical feathers. Well, I even still, they, yeah, even, even even still, yeah, even still. Well, they'd have to include Microraptor in that, uh, unless they want to bite the bullet on that one and just say Microraptor is a bird like David Menton did. Yes, uh, they probably do. They probably do. Yeah. Yeah, it's watching. Watching creationists flounder on bird evolution has been the funniest thing <laughs> because they went from there are no dinosaurs with feathers to all animals with feathers are birds, which has to include like uh, like like therizinosaurs and tyrannosauroids. It's very funny. Uh, of course, they don't they don't mention that. They say they'll include like uh, I think Menton said like Changiraptor and Microraptor which do look a lot like Archaeopteryx. So, like, you can say, okay, well, you know, th those are birds. But what about, you know, Sinornithosaurus? What about, uh, was it Eutyrannus, I think? Uh, and it's like, what so, about yeah. these guys? What, what they have feathers? Oh, uh, Savage Glyptodon Trilobites, Cobra. Fascinating. From two or for $2 says, either ducks aren't, oh, eater ducks aren't birds because they have down. Well, I mean, most birds have like downy feathers when they're juveniles, don't they? Yeah, they're little false balls. Yeah, they yeah, they're, they're little. Uh, yeah. They just have the, the down when they're first born. They don't have the the like flight feathers yet. Um, it's also also an interesting uh, implication about heterochromy, about how that plays into the development mm. of feathers as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because those sorts of downy feathers are the first feathers in the fossil record. Right, the the stem groups have like those. For, well, okay, the, they're preceded also by like the um the little uh like quills or whatever, which precede the downy feathers, and then yeah, then you have that um uh oh sorry, aren't two aren't dinosaurs? E.g., some so-called feathered dinosaurs are best viewed as secondarily flightless birds, like the emu or ostrich. Oh oh, Nestle, like, I'm making a prediction right now. I think they're gonna bite the bullet on it. On a Microraptor. <laughs> or three are frauds. <laughs> Archaeoraptor, which are not the forgery. Archaeoraptor, yeah. Notice how we haven't mentioned Archaeoraptor in our discussion of feathers so far. Like, the creationists are always the ones who bring up Archaeoraptor. We don't need to bring it up. There's no discussion among paleontologists as to whether or not Archaeoraptor, like, you know, is it a forgery? Is it not? We all accept it's a forgery, right? We all recognize that. The only people who keep bringing this up are the creationists because they have nothing. I can also, explain uh, that. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, no, no, no. One thing, like, one thing, like, mm -hmm. the, 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 like they again claimed about like that, that some some fuzzy dinosaurs are just flightless birds. That is also a uh, a bandit claim. Like they claim that like velociraptors are just flightless birds. Chris, mm. yeah. that's right. Yeah, because they're they're feathered, right? Right. Yeah. Amazing stuff, man. Can you them having to swallow like Velociraptor is actually a bird? Yeah, is they, they have to... hilarious. 
Mm -hmm. they, have, they have changed the position. They are not, no longer banned. They are no longer birds are not dinosaurs. They are now manned. Manoraptors are not dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. Although, again, that's another one I literally never see them talk about. They will get really close. Like, they'll mention a couple of dromaeosaurs that they can kind of shuffle over because if you look at Microraptor, it looks a lot like an Archaeopteryx, and so does Changiraptor. And so they can kind of get away with that, but nobody is falling for Eutyrannus. Nobody's falling for Therizinosaurus. Nobody's falling for um, mm -hmm. yeah, Cynornithosaurus. Cardipteryx, yeah, you could probably you could probably uh, throw that one in too, and they and you know that might uh, that might be some also, people. And it was also the case that the, even the sci like most scientists who first described Caldipteryx were like, oh, it's probably a flightless bird right. as well. But then, but then later we found, oh no, it's a oviraptor, so oviraptor or so, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, or or Genyen Halong, the uh, one of the the troodontids, yeah, that's. Oh yeah. They that they're like troodontids, dromaeosaurs, and like you could probably shuffle some of them over to the birds because they look so similar. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it gets really difficult, which, which is uh, evidence of common ancestry, of course. Um, I can it's, explain. It's, it's also it's also the case like even uh, uh, Th Thomas Holtz. I think you are familiar with him, Th yeah. Thomas mm -hmm. Holtz. Yeah, like yeah. he, I, I've watched his, his lecture sometimes, and he made the point that if. Velociraptor or the Oviraptor saurians were still alive today. Most people would say, "Oh, all right, they are they are just birds. Then come over, come over here. They are their birds because they right, are so you... they are so feathered because the the, the, fe the feathers made them make them appear to be birds." You'd be putting out little uh little little bird feeders for your Velociraptors, yeah. you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, your little the little Byronosaurus in your garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can explain that even if a transitional fossil between reptiles and birds was discovered, it would not refute intelligent design. So technically that's true, but it's true because intelligent design doesn't predict anything. There's nothing intelligent design um, materially predicts yeah. that could actually like be refuted. And even if you refute everything... Even if you're, if, you, if we like, you know, just absolutely tear through this as we are doing and we'll continue mm -hmm. to do, that doesn't mean God doesn't exist or that intelligent design is necessarily untrue. That's not right. Now, I'm not a believer, of course, but the fact that evolution occurred does not mean God isn't real. That's not what that means. You can believe in God and accept evolution, those are mm. perfectly fine. They're non-contradictory. Right. There's nothing contradictory about those beliefs. Same with intelligent design. You can believe in intelligent design and also accept mm -hmm. evolution. In Michael B., he does, or he claims he does at least, because in Darwin's Black Box, he says that he accepts universal common ancestry. But also, he's like, you know, Mr. Intelligent Design guy. So, yeah, you can hold both. It's fine. It's fine. It doesn't matter. As also, but, it's also one point to remember is that, like, it's, it's true that it, it doesn't refute intelligent design, but intelligent design would, all, would also exclude like uh, impossible chimeras. Like, why, would, why don't we see any Pegasus or any uh, centaurs or something like those chimeras? And of course, if you make that argument, then the creation will be all like, oh, have you ever heard about the uh, platypus? <laughs> oh my yeah. god. I got, I got Nam flashbacks when you said that. <laughs> I, oh, I'm, I'm I'm just a little little confused because if you had a transitional fossil between reptiles and birds, why would an intelligent designer use the the basic platform of a reptile to create a bird? Why wouldn't he start from scratch? I think it it would refute intelligent design because we're we're not looking at how cars work when we design an airplane. Mm -hmm. well, Other than I mean, than, than having I, having the, wheels to because you need those to land and and take off, right? Well, I mean, you know, I personally don't have a problem with people like, you know, saying maybe God just did it this way or whatever. Uh, that's fine. Like I, I don't care. Um, 
I'm not going to go out of my way to refute that or, or you know, just talk down to people who um, who believe it. So if they want to if they want to just say, you know, OK, well, that's the way God did it. Then OK, fine. Whatever. It's fine. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> I can explain problems with the scales to feathers hypothesis, including one feathers and scales are very different structurally. Well, yes, obviously. They, feathers develop. It's also, a, it's also a, a common mistake that fe feathers didn't like. I was an old hypothesis that like feathers are like flattened out scales. Yes, but right. But now, but now we now we think that they are like pla placodes developed for placodes, right. right? Yes, yeah. right. It is the yeah. It is it is the actual. Well, it's a, yeah. Feathers develop from hollow tubes which grow out of follicles in the skin, while scales are flat and folded skin built. So actually, the placode is the same. The placode that gives rise to both feathers and scales is oh, the, yeah, is like yeah. developmentally the same. Yes, the difference is, yeah. I mean, it, they're right when they say it grows out of hollow tubes versus the the folded skin. Yes, but the underlying it's, it's, it's like, development it's like the, program is the same. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's like the like on the on a flight feather with, with, with the double vein feather. Like one side is basically the inside surface of a hollow tube basically mm -hmm. yeah and the, and the other side of the uh, uh, veined feather is the outside surface of the hollow tube yeah feathers also grow really weirdly like feathers mm -hmm. don't grow like you think of plant growth right like a like a branch when a branch grows off a tree it's like the one branch first and then you have branches growing off of that branch that's not how feathers grow which is super bizarre. Feathers are more like if the entire branch grew out of the tree, like the branch was fully formed in a sense. Like, you know how it's like going to be later on, like once the, the branch matures or whatever. That's more like how feathers grow. It's like the whole thing grows outward. It's, it's almost weird. like, it's almost like, uh, it's a, uh... Like something that reminds me of bird feathers is like the fronds of ferns, like the, fir the fronds of ferns, like roll out basically, right? right? Yes, yeah. right. Yeah, same sort of same sort of principle because it's the yeah. whole thing coming out. It's it's like if you imagine like a feather is like underwater, you know, and you're like slowly pushing it up through the water. Like that's mm -hmm. more like how they come out. Yeah, it's really weird. Uh, feathers are strange, <clears throat> but uh, but we we do have well uh, as it says here. Two feathers are extremely well suited for flight. Yeah, downy feathers are so well suited for flight. I mean, just look at <laughs> baby chickens. They they're ready to fly right out right out the egg. It is unlikely there would be transitional stages between scales and fully functional flight feathers. Um, th uh, there so are since since, co since co option is not a thing. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, creationists don't understand co option in general. They just pretend it mm -hmm. doesn't happen. So. It's also it, it's a mistake that like like again many people have like a how do you call it a purpose oriented view of things right and they say like and they see things like oh feathers are used for flight so the innate purpose of feathers was always to use for flight but then it's not it's not always been the case of course because feathers were or at least the the previous to the early stages of feathers, mm -hmm. like the downy feathers, were more useful, like uh, thermal regulation, or or maybe even to, to incubate a, a clutch of eggs right. as well. Yeah. And we have literally we have oviraptorosaurs that literally died on their nests. Like um, right. Uh, oh, I'm trying to remember that. Was it was it city patty? Um, I think so. Yeah. No, no, it was Nemegtamaya. That's what it was. It was Nemegtamaya. Mm. Um, also, I mean... very, very unfortunately named because when we when we first discover them uh, uh, nesting on their own eggs, we say, "Oh, they must be stealing the eggs because <laughs> right. they are cold, they are cold blooded reptiles, so they must be just stealing the well, eggs." So we need them active. Well, right. I mean, the oviraptorosaurs in general are, but Nemegtamaya means the the mother of Nemegd, you know, which is in uh, Mongolia. Oh, justice! Finally, right, justice. right. Finally, some justice for the oviraptorosaurs. <laughs> Um, so I, you know, yeah, I'm, but, um, but yeah, it literally died covering its, its, uh, nest. What did you I'm, say, Peter? I'm, I'm having serious flashbacks. Weren't, weren't the oviraptors that laid their eggs in twos and then our, our good Canadian. <laughs> As they were running from the flood. Yeah. Uh, our good Canadian, oh, uh, no. tra train spotter. 
found a nest where where they were laid in a straight line, indicating that they were running mm -hmm. from the flood. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some things. That's right. Some yeah, things that was actually like made. Almost like you've seen a cartoon where like an, a chicken got scared and like dro dropped an egg, you know, like the, the like the old cartoon uh, uh, as, uh, stereo mm -hmm. or st stereotype joke. As and a matter like, of oh, fact, that as seems a realistic to me. As a matter of fact, uh, Potholer Fifty Four made the cartoon with the chicken. He did, yeah. Saying that he went out into the garden, scared his chicken, and his chicken start started laying eggs in a row. <laughs> I'm not kidding. As yeah. they were running, yeah, I remember that. That was very funny. Yes. Um. Yeah. Um. And and for those who don't know, the... Pot Potholer is back making videos about creationists again, which I absolutely love is there's going to be a new uh golden crocoduck uh so i i can't wait who's who's gonna get that um i can explain that the most current evolutionary explanations for the origin of the feathers suggest they evolved because they provide an insulation advantage and i understand that these explanations lack detail Def what do you mean what does that mean i mean i would say that that's an explanation for them and i think it is a good explanation given that that's what downy feathers still do um but also as we pointed out in what video was that where we talked about um oh that was the peacock's tail we talked about in the peacock's tail how um there there was a pterosaur discovered not long ago that had uh uh um uh oh shoot it had a protein it like uh uh, pigment proteins in its um in its little little uh pigment fibers you remember that uh, that suggests like it had color right i don't want that not surprise me that the pterosaurs were like very colorful yeah oh we did yeah we we talked i can't remember what what uh, the genus was but yeah we, we mentioned that so it wasn't oh, just it's like the, 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 flam the flamingo mimic or, or something oh, else pterodostro no i don't i don't think it was that one even though that one's always painted pink but i i think that's yeah. just because it was like a like a flamingo in his ecology no it was like uh it was like two pandactylus or something like that mm -hmm. jamie e you're out there aren't you somebody look it up i know i saw it recently um it had it had pigments in its in its pigment fibers and so that suggested it had, you know, had color, and so it would have used those colors to um, to to uh, um, signal to mates. But it's not the only one. Uh, uh, Cynornithosaurus also had a tail that was like a raccoon's tail. It had alternating uh, color uh, pigments on its tail, like it had the like yeah. red and white. It it flipped back and forth. Yeah, or, or maybe like a a, a, a lemur tail also, like the ring, ring right, tail. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Dang, I can't remember. Dang, I feel stupid. I can't remember what what the genus was. Uh, RJ, if you want to look it up, uh, pterosaur with pigments. Anyways. Okay. I can argue that the feathers of Archaeopteryx are essentially identical to modern birds and represent irreducibly complex structures, except they aren't, due to the complex interactions between shafts, barbs. Arbules, hooks, and catches. That's not even true for extant feathers. They, like, they seem to be suggesting that all feathers are the same in all of these characteristics. Like, downy feathers don't have a shaft at all. Right? They don't. They don't have a shaft. There's no central, like, the, the rachis. That isn't in downy feathers. It's in flight feathers. Um, but this is so stupid. So dumb. This is just so dumb. Okay. I can provide evidence that challenges the standard story of horse evolution. Was it pterodactyl? Was it? Uh, it you I, might I, be see, right. see a, I see a very recent, a recent article, J July 2023. Oh, it was uh, a uh, Tapajarid. Ah, oh well. Uh, it, it's, it's named Elvis. <laughs> Uh, nicknamed Elvis. Maybe I'm maybe talking, talking about a di different fossil. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, that's okay. Right. Um, I can provide evidence that challenges the standard story of horse evolution by noting that one, the horse body plan does not significantly evolve throughout the lineage. What does that even mean? And two, the supposed lineage is, art or two, the supposed lineage is artificial since some earlier horses are larger than later horses. 
apparently being larger than your descendants means that you didn't evolve, I guess. That's also how that Genesis. works. Also Genesis, yes. I... We, we, we always expect also Genesis. <laughs> Nobody ever expects orthogenesis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and three, the fossils portrayed in the lineage span different continents separated by vast ocean expanses. Remind me, Nestle, what is it horses are like famously known for? Isn't it like moving people and things from, you know, place to place? Walking and long distances. And has it been the case? Yeah, long, like long distance travel. Isn't that like what horses yeah. are typically known for? Yeah. I mean, it's like, like they they mention like uh, uh, separate oceans, but I believe like the continents were connected during those times. Like they, yeah, like, horse horse started out in North America and they migrated to like the what? Eurasia when they right. when the land bridge was. That's like what do you mean oh, also, were what yeah. do you mean were connected? If if you if you would uh, get all the water out of the oceans, you would notice that there's dirt dirt underneath. <laughs> Sorry, had to say that. <laughs> yeah, dinosaurs were famously small. Correct. Yes, all. Yeah. The, yes, no. That's such a good point. Yeah, because wait a second. Do they think that, um, like the ancestors of birds were all like like way smaller than them? I mean, Jackson, you they know, think, like, you know, miniaturization is not a thing. That I happens? When, when when you were a kid, didn't you get this dinosaur playset that had 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 mammoths and stuff in that? Those were all to scale. Ah, I see. <laughs> Dalton says my horses are known for being fat and lazy. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Wait, what is this? Did you find it? Pterosaur melanosomes support signaling functions for early feathers. Yes, this is it. What do they say? What species it was or what genus? Thank you. Thank you for finding. Yeah, it was two pandactylus. Haha, <laughs> I was right. Savage, glyptodont, trilobites, cobra. Thank you. I'm not crazy. Well, okay, irrelevant, but I can link things now. True, yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. Correct. Um, Yes, yeah, the, the the continents have been connected like repeatedly. That's that's been a thing that happens. Okay. Are they whatever. You know, creationists uh, uh Jerry Coyne once made a very good uh point that in uh uh or um the what is it? What is the book called? Uh Why Evolution is True. There we go. In Why Evolution is True that creationists essentially never write about biogeography. And I think that's true. I think I can count on one hand the number of times I've seen creationists like attempt to address biogeography. Yeah, they did a few times. Yeah, very, very few times. It's very, very few. Yeah, times. yeah, the, the ICBM hypothesis: the intercontinental ballistic marsupials. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Um, I can provide evidence that challenges the conclusion that land mammals evolved into aquatic whales by noting that many anat anatomical changes requiring many mutations would have been necessary for this transition to occur, including one, emergence of a blowhole with musculature and nerve control. <sighs> guys. Guys. I'm going to blow your mind right now. Are you ready for me to blow your mind? I'm going to blow it. Your nose is the blowhole. The blowhole is just the nose that moved upward on the head. That's it. Crazy, right? Crazy yeah. stuff. Like, <laughs> what do they think the blowhole is? Do they think it's like a separate, like a new hole? Like a, that... Yeah. It's a... <laughs> I don't know. What do they think it is? It's the nose. <laughs> whales <laughs> whales so still stupid. have two nostrils. As uh, opposed... the, the oh, baleen whales them. do. Not... Yes. Yeah. 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 Baleen Sold whales them. still have both nostrils, but they're fused in uh, tooth whales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My God, this is 
This is so incredibly stupid. Although, I'm although e- even even in the two thrills, I think that I think the, the like the, the, the channels of the of the narries still mm-hmm. are separate inside, right? I think I think that... you're probably right. I, I haven't yeah. I haven't looked in, but I, I, you're probably right. Uh, it, it's probably just like the the actual the the end, o- yeah, the end opening is uh, one opening, yeah, the end. yeah. On the outside, um, yeah. Two modification of the eye for permanent underwater vision, but you can already see underwater. That's already a thing you can do. What? Three ability to drink seawater. Okay. Uh, I mean, you can do that already. Um, you can already drink seawater a little. You shouldn't drink it a lot, but also we're land. Mm-hmm organisms the more well you'd also have to make this argument for like saltwater crocodiles right like you know, are they gonna say like saltwater crocodiles aren't real crocodiles because they can like drink salt water more than other ones like no they have modified you know, their kidneys so they can process salt water better it than... is, is, is a dif- the different in the salt balance is maintained and that's Again, right. it's a contin- it's also a, it's also a continuum, like the endothermy and, and uh, ectothermy, or the cold-blooded and right. blooded uh, divide, is also a continuum as well. I mean, you'd have to make this argument for, like, many, many, many groups of fish, too, right? You'd have, you could, are they going to say, like, oh, uh, you know, like, salmon aren't related to other saltwater fish because they spend part of their life in freshwater? You know, or eels aren't related to other eels because they spend part of their life in freshwater or saltwater, you know, vice versa. Or are bull sharks related to other sharks because they can also go uh, freshwater? What about stingrays? There are freshwater stingrays and saltwater stingrays. Are they unrelated? Like, this is one of those times where the creationists are so bent on making the argument for one thing that they blow off their foot with respect to everything else. Like, creationist arguments are constantly, like, dominoes falling over, and so they have to, like, try to prop up them with other dominoes, but by doing that, it it's, it just makes the problem worse, you know? It's like the, uh, like the, the heat problem, for instance, right? Like, every solu- solution, quote, quote, that they have to the heat problem just creates another problem somewhere else that they have to then plug with another <laughs> solution. This, this is the same sort of thing. If you want to say, like, well, it would have been impossible for the ancestors of whales to drink seawater, then don't you also have to therefore make that argument for everything else? Or, or, or you know, like, something that is that lives in salt water can't become freshwater? Right? And what about organisms who do both? You know, what, what about brackish water organisms? Or, or gars can spend quite a bit. Gars are freshwater. But they can spend a bit of time in brackish and even salt water for a little bit. It's it's, so it's as like if you they, make stuff there's up. There's no thought. As if you make stuff up instead of looking at the evidence, you need to keep making stuff up because you're yeah. basically going to ruin one point with another point that you're making, and then you have to make new stuff up for your original point in order to make that fit. It's a never-ending right. story. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Uh, four limbs transformed into flippers. It's the same bones. We literally have the same hand bones as whales. That has not changed. Mm-hmm. Like they have hyperphalange yeah. yeah. now, so they have more finger bones. But otherwise, it's the yeah. same. It's literally the same exact. Uh, also, also, they they have finger bones like the phalanges, but the phalanges mm-hmm. are fused, so they right. cannot they cannot bend these individual uh, phalanges. Mm, why would that be? Why, why make separate bones and then fuse them again later on? <laughs> right. But also, doesn't would that also apply to like seals? Are seals and, and sea lions and walruses, are they unrelated to like dogs uh, and bears? The, the, the designer was just trying things out. He was like in the oh. early phase of, uh, of a pl- planet. He was trying to make something like whales, but he, he was, it was just in a, an early. Uh, an early beta beta version of whales, basically. <laughs> it's not a phase, Dad. <laughs> Modification of the skeletal structure. That's true for like literally all animals, or for all vertebrates. 
All vertebrates have modified their skeletal structure in some way or another. Literally every single one of them. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's true between like two different species of cats, right? You you know, you have skeletal structure differences between two different cat species. Does that mean they're not related or two different species of dog? Or look at the skeletal structure differences between different breeds of dog. You're telling me a pug has the same skeletal structure as a Great Dane? No. They're very different. Unless by skeletal structure, like we're, <clears throat> we're, um, you know, so making again, up... deliberately vague. It's just, right. just too vague to even, it's just, just too vague to even discuss. Not, it's, it's a case for, of not even wrong. Like we, right. We cannot even discuss something like this unless you qualify it even further. <laughs> Alpha whales and beta whales, the virgin porpoise versus the Chad dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the ability to nurse young underwater. I mean, manatees do that too. Well, they'd probably well they'd probably say manatees aren't related to land animals, even though they have fingernails and everything. Um, okay, I mean, you can nurse your young in the water. Like that's a thing you can do. I don't recommend it, but you can do it. Uh, seven origin of tail flukes and musculature. Well, again, the the mus the musculature for the tail fluke is like is your your dorsal muscles, right, and leg muscles, right? It it's like an extension of those. It's not all new muscles. Mm -hmm. And eight blubber for temper for temperature insulation. Again, like th that's happened in lots of different groups of mammals. Uh, like we said, manatees, walruses, seals, they also have blubber. Even I also know many. Ichthyosaurs had blubber too, apparently. Yeah. I also know many people who gain a lot of fat in a lifetime as well. <laughs> hey, remember the pharyngeal the pharyngeal pouches are just uh our neck <laughs> fat. That's all it is. <laughs> um just I can fold, explain folds in skin, yeah. Yeah, just folds in skin. I can explain problems with the land mammal to whale transition, including one, the fossil record requires that the evolution of whales from Small land mammals took place in less than 10 million years. We don't know that, actually. Insufficient insufficient time for these required changes to evolve. We definitely don't know that. But also that took place in less than 10 million years. So that's based on a single uh, basilosaurid, uh, oh, yeah. of which the, the date was kind of argued based on where it was. Um, but it was... And, like, more recent dates of that. We also argued with, long story short, over that. Mm -hmm. Um but that that particular basilosaurid skull was actually it. So what they do for that is when you do a uh, a radiometric analysis of a of of a stratum, you get a range, you get a date range. So what the creationists did was they assumed, um, the the uh, uh, they assumed that the the furthest back in time, like extreme end of the radiometric date is the true date instead of the, 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 the extreme end of the error bar basically right yes. yeah the extreme end of the error bar is the mean is pretty much what they were pretending when it wasn't um and like they operated based on that which is super disingenuous very very disingenuous um so i, and I also, think I, I, like a rational mind went pretty deep in that uh, uh, or yes. in the script, he, he wrote a very, very detailed, and also he also made many slides for explaining the papers uh, mm -hmm. involving in that fossil, and, and in, right. in the even in the uh, Lama Seta site as well. I think it is called the, uh, yeah. the geological mm -hmm. deposit. Deposit, yes. Yeah. So there's a very, very detailed story about that. Yeah. Yeah, and that was also when I decided we weren't going to argue with Long Story Short anymore because he's a hack. Um, because he basically <laughs> ignored the first, like, the first, like, 12 to 13 minutes of our video. Um, and just jumped straight to the, the La Maceta stuff. Um, because we rewrote this whole section on explaining all the synapomorphies that uh, Pachycetus shares with later whales. And he just kind of skipped it. He's like, eh, I don't care. Yeah, it's all... Uh, it I remember that, yeah. He, he, he put up a paper about Indo-Hyas, and in mm -hmm. the paper, it, it says that, 
oh, the synapomorphies, but, but it, it's shared between uh, between phagocytes and uh, monorails are no are not unique to that group, but there is still a unique complex of traits. Like mm -hmm. individually, the traits are not unique, but the traits together they are unique, basically. And right. and long story short, the mistook that as saying like oh. The traits shared by Indohyas and wells are not unique to them. But no, no, it's, he, he confused the, the two. The trait, the, the trait that Indohyas shared with modern wells, like the, uh, the Involucrum, that is unique and, right. and still unique to that group. Right, right. And it also had the, uh, the unique uh, ankle bone of artiodactyls, the Astragalus, which has this yes. specific pulley structure that's not present in literally any other groups of mammals. Um, RJ says, may I inquire whether the DI syllabus has sources for any of these whale claims? Nope, not one. They do not put any citations at all for anything in this. It's literally just talking points. It's just bullets, just bullet points. That's all it is. Uh, and two, when the supposed transitional fossils between land mammals and whales are cited, they are, they are rare and invalidate neo-Darwinian evolution by the short amount of time allowed by the fossil record? Wait, so their argument's literally just there aren't enough of them? They're not satisfied because there aren't more? That's literally their argument? Okay. Cool. Haha, for you see, I, I found the gap in between this fossil and this fossil. What do you say then, Professor Farnsworth? <laughs> Yeah, Doctor Doctor Banjo, uh, as always, a very yep. good reference. Yeah, I think it's so funny. Um, here's Pachycetus. I don't care. Okay, well, here's Ambulocetus. I don't care. Okay, here's Myocetus. I don't care. Here's Bacillosaurus. I don't care. You know, it's just like, what, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? I can summarize major problems with supposed evolutionary transitions. Okay. All right, now let's. Oh, uh, let's oh wait, wait, wait. When you when you ask them, what do you want? The answer is still the same. I don't care. Yeah, still basically, same. I don't care. Yeah. Well, remember, um, when we did the the script for Professor Dave, uh, the response to Gunter Beckley, one of the things that Beckley points out in his blog, or so we pointed out in the 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 Professor Dave response to Stephen Meyer, that, um. Stephen Meyer does not have a model of what he thinks was going on in the Cambrian. As RJ likes to point out, the creationists have no map of time. Now, Stephen Meyer, who is not a young Earth creationist, he's an intelligent design proponent, and he accepts that the Earth is old. He also does not have a map of time. He has no, no explanation. If you ask him, you know, give me a picture, describe for me what you think was going on 550 million years ago. 540 million years ago, 530 million years ago, you get nothing. He has no idea. He literally doesn't think about it. And and that's something RJ uh, uh, points out in uh, Evolution Slam Dunk with regard to creationists who talk about the reptile mammal transition. We talked about it at length in The Rocks Were There. We'll, of course, talk about it again in The Rocks Were There, Volume 2. Um, they creationists are all too willing to tell you what they don't think happened, but they'll never tell you what they do think happened. Their brain, uh, like, doesn't allow them to think about it, in a sense. What, what were you saying, Nestle? Well, I, I think... Uh, sorry for interrupting. If no, I, go ahead. If I, did. Like, I, I would think they would use, like, again, uh, vague terms, or, or, or even terms that are u still used, but not defined, like phyla, like, oh, there were a few phyla before, but then during the explosion, now we have lots and lots of phyla, for example. Well, I think for that, instance, that's, that's something it, they would say. Yeah. Well, if you were to ask them, like, you know, okay, the arthropod phylum, what does the arthropod phylum look like 550 million years ago? Is there an arthropod phylum at this point? Are there ancestors of arthropods around at this point? Or, or, or is, specifically stem groups, yeah. Right, or is God, like, rolling up his sleeves and preparing to boop them onto the planet, you know? <laughs> is that what's happening? <laughs> but they don't have a response. They really literally don't think about it. Mm -hmm. And Gunter Beckley, uh, props to him, just came out and said that. He literally says, uh, we don't need a model. 
uh, in his response to the, the Professor Dave video. And we were like, uh, that's kind of important. You kind of need a model because you're claiming to be scientific. If you want to be science, you have to explain what you, th you, you have to explain what you think happened. You have to propose a model, propose hypotheses that are testable. And if you're not doing that, you're really not doing science. Ian DeBunk yeah, make, yeah, makes a good on, point. Unless you're... Ian DeBunk yeah, makes yeah, a good on, point. Unless when... you're just critiquing... Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. So, so, sorry. Sorry, go, go ahead. Sorry. I, I, yeah. there's, a, there's a delay, I think. So that's why... Yeah. Yeah. Ian so, DeBunk makes a good point. If they say what they think happened, they might be proven wrong. So if, they, if they're going to come up true. with, with yeah. a model, then you might be able to shoot it down. So have, not having a model is probably advantageous for, for people like that. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Can't falsify a model that doesn't exist. All right, what yeah. were you saying, Nestle? Mm -hmm. I was just saying, like, un unless just making a critique, then you don't need a model of your own. But of course, that's not the Discovery Institute. They, they are, like, they are trying, uh, trying, quote-unquote, to provide their own ideas, but right. they don't substantiate those they ideas. They claim to be a scientific institution. To be mm -hmm. a, a non-religious scientific institution. That's their claim. Now, obviously, they're lying about that. We know that. Uh, but that's their claim. But they don't even try. They don't even try. Uh, let's skip down to part two with Ida. Because we already read that part, basically. I do like that we will look at, hy at the hypothesized horse lineage and the manner in which some fossils have been manipulated in an attempt to support an invalid evolutionary uh, orthogenesis. Again, I guarantee they're just talking about orthogenesis, which yeah. we don't agree with. It's wrong. So who cares? Uh, again, if you, if, if you, again, they lump every idea into like 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 orthogenesis, including orthogenesis, into like the whole evolution thing and if they and if they, if they think if they debunk one of those ideas then they have debunked everything basically right almost yeah it's 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 really weird yeah they, they they cannot tell they cannot tell the difference between different hypotheses or ideas that have been competing with each other for a long time before like the the 1950s or something like that like before <laughs> right or, or, yeah. Or, or, or like when was autogenesis still popular in paleo like autogenesis was popular among paleontologists right yeah so it was like 1920s was... 1930s that sort of 1940s, yeah 40s yeah that sort of time period because i have a book from from the 40s that's kind of like uh i don't really buy orthogenesis uh it's mm -hmm. um oh shoot what is that book titled um it's a very famous uh book from the 1940s on evolution oh shoot uh i'm not gonna go get it oh uh, it's got uh, uh, George Gaylord Simpson is the one who wrote the uh, the essay on orthogenesis. He's like, eh, I don't really buy it, but he's like, there are some aspects of it that seem valid, but as a, a whole concept, he's like, uh, nah. Um, I, I I think like back then when we had very few fossils, they had, they had the tendency to put them in in one line basically yes. because of the few fossils they had. But then when we discovered more, then things began to appear more like, oh, it's because um, like. A Three and, almost, yeah. And even like Gould was kind of pushing against that sort of thinking in like the nineteen seventies uh, and eighties with um, when like uh, Australopiths were becoming like more widely known uh, in uh, ever since Darwin, which is a really good book. Highly recommend it. Dang, it's like evolution, genetics, and development, or something like that. I think is the book. Mm. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, I I do think that's what evolution, genetics, and development is that the title of it? Oops, forgot caps lock was on. Uh, mm, I think by uh, is it Simpson? George Gaylord Simpson. Uh, whatever whatever okay fine right back to the show okay all righty ida in 2009 a fossil primate dubbed ida or ida however you pronounce it uh by her discoverers 
was introduced by the media as the eighth wonder of the world and the link that connects us directly with the rest of the animal kingdom. Yeah, we agree. That's dumb. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's was really stupid of those. Uh, I, were, were, the, were the scientists saying the eighth wonder world or the journalists saying I, that? I think it was just the journalists. Mm, that makes sense. I honestly but don't it, even yeah. remember. Like, I'm usually pretty good with paleontologists. I don't even remember the name of the researchers who discovered Ida. I don't even remember who it was. Oh well, but that goes to show you it is a beautiful fossil. Yeah, it was a it was a beautiful fossil, but the eighth wonder of the world is a pretty overstatement. (laughs) But like it goes to show you, it wasn't them, right? Because we know, Uh, like like Lieberger and you know other uh, like Raymond Dart and these other people, but like it wasn't them who was popularizing it that way. Um, yeah, whatever. Such hype is necessary to promote so-called missing links to the public because as we learned in chapter 15 the false record has not been kind to gra- look at this here they go again gradualistic theories of evolution by natural selection L- literally nothing to do with that the fact that transitional fossils exist has literally nothing to do with gradualism versus punctuate equilibrium nothing at all mm-hmm. uh, this is stupid they're just like taking pot shots um uh, pfft. I, I mean, I agree. So, okay. Uh, I don't agree that the hype is necessary to promote, like, that fossils are transitional, because transitional fossils are found all the time, but you don't, most people don't care about them. I'll give you an example. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, for instance, Parmastega. Parmastega. Uh, it is transitional, like in its morphology, between Tiktaalik and Acanthostega. Now, many people have heard of Tiktaalik because Neil Shubin wrote a book on it and did a bunch of documentaries and all that jazz. I don't know, like anybody outside of like, you know, our paleontological circles who has heard of Parmastega. But Parmastega is really cool. I've uh, heard of Parmesan. I heard the <laughs> Sorry, that's right? Funny. Exactly. Um, or uh, like Entelognathus, which is a placoderm that has like, um, it has jaw. Uh, the jaw structure is much more similar to that of like the the um, the the bony fish. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it? What is it called? What is it? Osteo. Uh, what's the term for it? The bony fish, like Sarcopterygia. Uh, 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 osteichthys. Osteichthys. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. So it's like it's it's very close to like the base of Osteichthys. So it, again, it's a transitional fossil in that sense, but nobody really knows about. It. Even more like more famous ones that maybe people have heard of, like Hycoichthys. Um, it's it's more famous, but it's still not really that well known in the public, right? It's we paleontologists find missing link or missing links quote quote find transitional forms all the time uh but most of them don't get promoted either because mm-hmm. like yeah it, it's really it's really hard to promote a like an inch long uh, <laughs> you know uh wormy fish <laughs> guy as like wow here it is the eighth wonder of the world <laughs> people are like um okay all right i, I, I guess that's neat uh, you know <laughs> i i i don't know like I think here in, in in sentence B under this uh, bullet point, they, they it make it makes them seem like they seem to think that um, it's like a almost like a conspiracy sort of mm-hmm. to yes. promote to promote this idea of oh we have the fossils and such like that like that. So to, we to have counter, to have the media yeah. on board, otherwise yeah, yeah. everyone would just would just not believe it. I, I guess. <clears throat> Yeah, it's it's basically it's basically uh, it's almost like they 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 think like oh that this is a uh, this is this is needed because to brainwash the public into believing this. Yeah, yeah um, it's, it's oh, that's why it's necessary. They they believe that's why it's necessary. Yeah, that's, yeah, the next yeah. It's sentence. it's yeah. what it's right. what Dean Wayne just said. Uh, young Earth creationists and ideas complain about uh, media coverage because they're concerned about what people believe, not what what is true. Yeah, that, that is really what it seems like, like yeah. how, they're, how they're coming off in this. Yeah, 100%. Uh, 
A few months later, Ida's prestige came crashing down after scientists inspected the fossil because they hadn't inspected it before, I guess. <laughs> and determined that many lines of evidence indicate that Ida has nothing at all to do with human evolution. Well, it's, that's also not true. It's, it's what the scientists do, Jackson. They, they find something, then drop it on their desk and run outside and yell. They don't look at <laughs> yes. it. I mean, it's... Right. Ah, no, well, hundred percent. Yeah, they they just like they were like, wow, and then you know, get get this to the New York Times quick. Don't look at it yeah. <laughs> or something. I guess. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, um, like it, it's. Oh, do you want to read it first? Oh, Sorry, I, I was just gonna say, uh, like we we talked about the part C earlier. Like again, it's mm-hmm. wrong. Yeah, I mean, Ida still does tell us about our own evolution in the sense that. Uh, it, it's a representative of early uh, strepsorines. Yeah. So uh, early, pro- early primates. Yeah. Early yeah. primates. Or, or specifically the early branch of the lemur or the strepsorines side. Yeah. yeah. Which is still part of the like, primate tree. Yeah. It's, it, it's also similar to like the, uh, we can also cover a bit of, of the Archaeoraptor thing. Like there was, uh, was a guy, I think his name was Stephen Zorkus. Yes. Or, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like he, he uh, purchased a fossil on uh, that was uh, illegally smuggled out of China, I think. Yeah. Mm, yes. And yeah. he was like, "Oh wow, this is a very imp- impressive fossil, a transitional species." And he went to he first went to scientists, and every single scientist he went through with this fossil told him, uh, "This seems to be like a forgery." So sorry, you got duped. You you paid like how much did he pay for fossil? I forgot. Like a very high amount. A very high amount. <laughs> Oh yeah, like it was several, like, thousand, it was, several thousands of dollars. It was like tens of thousands, I think. Really? Wow. I'm yeah, thinking the he, fossil was like tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So yeah, he he, he paid a very a, a very gross a, a very gross amount of uh, money for that fossil. So of course of course Zerkas didn't want to believe that the fossil was fake or, or for, forged. So he went to the we went to the journalist then to promote it, and the journalist basically oh. published. Yeah. Oh, I found it. Eighty thousand dollars. Wow! Purchased a fake fossil for eighty thousand dollars. That's gotta uh, he, hurt. He got, he got duped. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I knew it was. I was like, no, it was more than that. I didn't realize it was eighty thousand dollars. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. So it, 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 it was the, it, uh, even though the scientist warned him that this was likely a forgery, he, he pushed it through the the media, and eventually it ended up. Being published in the in a like a publication of uh, National Geographic, I think, and and uh, yes, even yeah. even before and be, before it got properly peer reviewed in in science, and then eventually scientists published the paper pointing out yeah, that yes, this was a basically two fossils combined into one, and one fossil mm-hmm. was like. Uh, uh, a, a Mycoraptor, like one, one part was Mycoraptor, and I think the other part was uh, Ichthyo. Uh, oh, Ichthyornis? Uh, Is that what you're thinking of? Ichthyornis, I think so, yeah. Like one part was I, I know and that. Other, yeah. I know one part was Mycoraptor. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I remember that part. Um, funny enough, I actually did get to meet one of the paleontologists who reviewed it and was like, nah. Uh, and that was Julia Clark. I got to meet her back in, uh, I think it was. 2016 or 2017 cool lady um i i did not know though that she was one of the people who had reviewed the fossil beforehand otherwise i would have asked her about it but ah, missed opportunities oh well <clears throat> anyway oh oh i, I looked it up it it, it is uh a micro raptor and yanornis those Yanornis, are the two okay. main the two main species that, that, that were combined into one so basically what happened is like uh, maybe a poor farmer or someone else found mm. two partial fossils, like one of Microraptor and one partial fossil mm. of, of Yanornis. And they were like, oh, we can sell it for a higher price when we combine them into one complete thing, basically. And that's what happened, perhaps. Oh, right. pr- probably, yeah. I, I, I think you're probably right. That That is probably yeah. what happened. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fish to amphibians. The first four-legged vertebrates, i.e. tetrapods, found in the fossil record were amphibians. It's, I mean, 
they were amphibious. They weren't amphibians, <laughs> but close enough. You know, who cares? What, not, what, what is not this amphibia? amphibia? Not this amphibia. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's what's the point of being right when you can be almost right? Mm -hmm. uh, animals that spend their lives both walking on land and swimming in the water. So mudskippers are therefore amphibians also. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Um, I mean, by that definition, you know, let's get preserved amphibians, I guess. Mm -hmm. These organisms have lived a land plus water lifestyle for eons without evolving into anything other than amphibians, indicating that an organism can share traits with multiple groups and yet not necessarily be. Hold on, wait, wait, hold on a second. Wait, what? These organ, I get amphibians have lived a land plus water lifestyle for eons. No. It's still the Phanerozoic. It has not been more than one eon. They've no frog turns into a human, Jackson. Oh. They didn't turn into a human. That makes me ill. <laughs> uh, without evolving into anything other... Are they really doing the it's still a bacterium argument? Yes, yes I think they are doing that. Are they, they, they really? think they are doing the... Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Like they, they, they are like, oh, but why didn't amphibians turn into something else? Or like a human or a, or, a, or a bird or something. Just when I thought that hmm. my, my, uh, my expectations couldn't get any lower, we, we dug further and they got deeper down. Now we've reached Kent Hovind's level. Stupidity. You know what? Yeah. Okay, Nestle, I'm going to make another prediction. and We're coming up on the end, so we'll have to save this for next time, probably. Mm -hmm. Jackson prediction. Here we go. I am predicting they're going to make a why don't we find a insert mix between two different modern animals argument. That's my prediction. I guarantee oh, yeah, we're like, going to see one by the end of this. Like, like a, a, a crocodile argument, basically. Yeah. Yes, because yes, Bodie Hodge right. and Georgia Purdom made one as RJ and I pointed <laughs> out in the Rocks Volume One, so I, I'd be oh, what, willing to bet money we're going to see that. What, what, did they, what? what did they say? Uh, George they said we don't Purdom? find any. Yeah, Georgia Purdom and Bodie Hodge said we don't find any uh, dog cat hybrids in the fossil record. Oh, really? We wow. Our common ancestor. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was in uh, chapter. Uh, was it chapter five where we talk about kinds? So yeah. Wait, was it? I think so. We, I, we uh, don't anyway, find uh, RJ. You can, you can we we don't find a, a dog cat hybrid in the fossil record. Yes. Hmm. As someone pointed out, that we do find a sheep goat hybrid. <laughs> I'm just saying. Or or well, or a, a, they're a, they're a, saying like a cam a, a, a camel camel uh, a llama camel. Whatever it's well, called. So basically, they're like, we don't find, they're saying like, there aren't, um, yeah, there are no, uh, like, basal carnivorans in the fossil record because there are no hybrids of dogs and cats. And so, yeah. Now, obviously, you could be like, um, you know, what about like the meocids? What, what about it's them? Of, it's, of course, not a, it's, of course, not a, uh, cat, uh, dog hybrid, of course. Me, yes, it's yeah, it's, it's, right. it's not like a mix between the modern, no, yeah, no, modern animals. yeah. But if yeah. you want, if you want to rack the, their brains even further, you can point out that re retractable claws is like a, a, a ancestral trait among the carnivores, like meacids had retractable claws. And you can also mm -hmm. point out that Hesperocyon, like one of the early members of the the dog family also had retractable claws, or at least partially retractable claws. And yes, so, Jamie, yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, dogs are more closely yeah. related to bears, seals, and weasels than, than cats. Yeah, also, mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, it's it's so it was so stupid. I was like, did they really make that argument? And look, here we are, making another like Ray Comfort level argument. Oh, no. I, I, w I was just looking up a Sparrow Scion on on Google and such, and I found uh, David Peters oh, that's claiming right. Hesperocyon is, is, is actually a cat. He's saying it's actually a cat. Hesperocyon. <sighs> that makes me even more depressed. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, 
Um, okay, so basically it's the they're still bacteria argument. Okay. Indicating an organism can share traits in multiple groups and yet not necessarily be part of an evolutionary transition. I don't even know what that means. I, I legitimately don't even know what that means. In 2004, some paleontologists discovered a fossil in the Canadian Arctic they claim was a fish-like creature with legs, a Darwin fish named Tiktaalik rosier. There are two reasons why Tiktaalik is said to fulfill a prediction of evolutionary biology. Neil Shubin, who, who co-discovered Tiktaalik, called the fossil a fish with a wrist, which it is. However, closer inspection showed that it had fish-like fins, a very different skeletal structure from a tetrapod leg, and no wrist bones. Again, they're just lying. Like, they're literally just lying at this point. This is just a bald-faced lie. Um, all tetrapodomorphs, all of them, from, uh, you know, Ichthyostega, Acanthostega, Parmastega, Tiktaalik, Pandarichthys, Eusynopteron, uh, to, the, like, the, the Rhizodontids and the Osteoleppiforms, they all have the hand they all have the uh the the tetrapod uh arm wrist structure all of them do and we talked about they, that they, in the have to, tale. They, they have the humor they have humorous and they also have i think some of them have like the shoulder separate from the cranium like in fish they don't have like in most fish they don't have shoulders but but, but mm -hmm. like these, these right. scapula is like fused to the skull basically but then i i, I forgot where at what point these became separated. I forgot about that. I think, yeah, yeah, it's uh, so, somewhere I think, I think it's just just after Eusynopteron. I think Eusynopteron still had the scapula fused, but then later on it was separate. And then they, right. and then you have remember. fish with, and then you have fish with shoulders <laughs> because fish need shoulders, don't you know? Yeah, but like. And this was an interesting, this was interesting point out, put out was, why would fish need shoulders? I think it's probably because they they want they want to turn their heads or they, or they need or it's beneficial mm -hmm. to have to have this ability to turn their heads independently from the rest of their body. Right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I mean, like it's it's a it is literally a diagnostic character of tetrapodomorphs that they have the the tetrapod um uh, arm and, and wrist all of them all of them have that so this is just a lie and again of course there's no citation they're not going to point to like a document you can go read about it it's certainly not a technical paper i figured it out uh two I've, i figured it out what, what did you figure out fish need broad shoulders to 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 carry all the claim the weird claims of the the creationists that's oh <laughs> Yeah, they have to bear that. So is that right? Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Um, <laughs> however, or, no, sorry, uh, not that one. Uh, two leading experts acknowledge these large differences, admitting there remains a large morphological gap between the fins of Tiktaalik and the limbs in tetrapods. Well, yeah, I mean they still don't have they don't have the like metacarpals and phalanges, but saying there's a morphological gap, but also like that they. This is again. This is like the um. This is the again the not even wrong sort of thing. This is when They're you find there is a large. Yeah, th th this is when you find uh, 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 an intermediate fossil where they come up with what? Well, yeah, but now you got two gaps. Well, it... yeah. I mean, yeah. That's that's true. They do like doing that. Um, but like they're saying, you know. There's a large morphological gap. It a very different skeletal structure. What does that mean? What does it mean? What What do you mean when you say there is a large or it's very different, a large gap, you know, or it's very different? They're not going to ever define what these terms mean. They're not going to ever tell us what they expect uh, for us to find if evolution is true. They just want to say no, uh -uh, not enough, and that's it. They don't care. Um. Some have claimed that Tiktaalik, dated at about 375 million years ago, was found between the supposed fish ancestors and tetrap uh, the fish ancestor tetrapods and the first true tetrapods in the fossil record. I mean, that's that's still true. The, mm -hmm. With body fossils, that's still true. Uh, however, in 2010, again, this claim fell apart when the the yeah when the tetrapod tracks were discovered in Poland that predated Tiktaalik about 20 million years. Mean meaning Tiktaalik's presumed tetrapod dot 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 we gotta scroll down peter uh please 
Descendants yeah. now appear 20 million years before TikTok itself, far from just the right age. Yeah, as we said earlier, um, it it if those are tetrapod tracks, that again doesn't mean Tiktaalik. Uh, Tiktaalik may be part of a ghost lineage that stretches like 20 million years into the past. That's possible. Or you know, Tiktaalik is just a you know is like a late member of a of a a more basal lineage. That's all that means. If you look at the paper where the Zakelmi tracks were described, all it does is push the common ancestor dates for like Tiktaalik and Acanthostega backwards. It doesn't say their phylogeny is destroyed. It just says you have to, you have to push them further back in time, which is fine. Okay, so what? Isn't, like isn't, I mean, really? Like so what? Isn't there something missing? Because so we we've gone through points one, two, two, five. If I scroll back, uh, reasons why Tiktaalik is said to fulfill a prediction in evolutionary oh, biology. There are two it 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 yeah okay. so um it was a prediction because it was predicted where we would find it that was the prediction yeah. so i mean it was they were right they yeah. were absolutely correct yes so but that's the only thing somehow isn't mentioned in all of this funny enough i mean they were looking for a a a, a a fishy ancestor of tetrapods that lived 375 million years ago. Yes. And they found exactly that. They found and a fishy ancestor of tetrapods 375 million years ago. In in the layer where they were supposed to go look for it, because that would be the layer that would fit. And that's where they found it. So, yeah. How is this not yeah. a prediction fulfilled? Uh, I mean, you can say... You can say that, like, their analysis was slightly off. They should have been looking in older strata for the actual ancestors, which, okay, fair enough. But but the prediction that Neil Shubin made was correct, right? I mean, it, it was true. So Yeah, or um, he wouldn't have found it. Hey, can you scroll down a little bit more? Yes. Can you scroll down a little bit more, please? Okay, we'll, fit, we'll do E, then we'll, we'll cut it for tonight. Contrary to the massive public relations campaign for Tiktaalik, the fossil evidence does not support the Darwinian claim that it was a transitional intermediate between fish and tetrapods. Okay, none of the arguments that they made at any point actually detract from the fact that Tiktaalik is morphologically intermediate between earlier Sarcopterygians and tetrapods, saying their only argument was, one, the fins are slightly different, which I mean they are. It, it's not transitional enough, I guess, is the argument. It's transitional, but not transitional enough, I guess. And the other argument was, well, it's not in the perfect chronological order, which again, okay. So what? That doesn't make any of the characters that it has disappear. Tiktaalik has characteristics intermediate between Pandarichthys and Acanthostega, or Pandarichthys and Parmastega now. Those characteristics did not go away. It still has those characteristics. Now you can say, you can whine all you want uh, about, well, it doesn't fit perfectly chronologically, but fossils don't have to. No one said fossils have to all be in a perfect chronological order for evolution to be true. That has literally never been an argument. Not once ever. So it does not matter. Anyway. Okay. Well, we're at the two hour mark, so I guess uh, if we want to go back to uh, the normal, uh, yeah, normal screen. And next time we'll cover the the reptile to bird transition. I'm sure it'll be every bit as terrible. I, I mean, informative as the other arguments that they've offered. Expect to hear Fiducia's name repeated again, and again, or in this case, maybe not because they don't they don't have citations in this. That's true. In this course. Yeah. yeah, not one citation. I love the um, not even like a, a like a, a like a footnote or anything for the leading experts say. It's literally just a partial quote. <laughs> so it's like you were supposed to look it up, I guess. Isn't this a school? I thought you were teaching us. No, okay. Yeah, it's it's it, it, 
even in textbooks and slides that professors will give, there's a, there's always a citation given for further information for the students. Of course, most students won't look it up, of course, but, th but still, we still provide the necessary information if they want to look it up even further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But of course, at uh, at uh, discovery unlearning, you know that's not really the uh, the goal. So, well, uh, that was fun. Did you guys have have fun as as much fun as I did? A uh, faithful friend who do things together. <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, I I have to say I was a little bit quiet because um. Um, I don't know people who follow your dog again. No, people who follow uh, Robert Reed, my my co-host on Twitter. Uh, go go have a look at okay. his at his Twitter account. There's some sad news, and that basically got me because it's about a year ago when I had the the same sad news. So that that um well yeah brought back some memories that I yeah weren't weren't that great. But uh, go to Robert's oh, uh, Twitter account and send him some love. He's going to need it. Yes, please do. Yes, please do. Um, well, uh, thank you, everybody who is in the live chat. I appreciate all you guys uh, being here. And thank you, Peter and Nestle, for being here. Also, I appreciate all of your inputs. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to coin. Uh, I'm going to coin because there was uh, some some confusion about what a a dog cat hybrid should be, and and they came up with several names. They're dots, and obviously dots. obviously they exist because I've seen dots, yeah. lots of dots. So <laughs> yeah, there's there's that. Alrighty, well. Thank you, everybody, and uh, we will see all of you next Thursday. See you next week.